of the Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempis. Book 1 Admonitions Useful for the Spiritual Life. Chapter 24 Of Judgment and the Punishment of Sins. In all things look to the end, and see how thou wilt be able to stand before the strict judge, from whom nothing is hidden, who is not appeased by bribes, who admits no excuses, but will judge that which is just. O most wretched and foolish sinner, what answer wilt thou make to God, who knows all thy evil deeds? Thou, who sometimes art afraid of the looks of an angry man, why dost thou not provide for thyself against the day of judgment, when no man can be excused or defended by another, but when every one will be burden enough for himself? Now thy labor is fruitful, thy tears are acceptable, thy sighs can be heard, thy sorrow is satisfactory and purifying. A patient man has a great and wholesome purification, who, receiving injuries, is more concerned at the sin of another than his own wrong, who willingly prays for his adversaries, and from his heart forgives offenses, who delays not to ask pardon of others, who is more easily moved to pity than to anger, who often does violence to himself, and strives to bring the flesh wholly under subjection to the spirit. It is better now to purge out our sins and cut away our vices, than to reserve them to be purged hereafter. Truly we deceive ourselves through the inordinate love we bear to the flesh. What other things shall that fire feed on but thy sins? The more thou sparest thyself now, and followest the flesh, the more grievously shalt thou suffer hereafter, and the more fuel dost thou lay up for the flame. In what things a man hath sinned, in these shall he be more heavily punished. There the slothful are plied with fiery goads, and the gluttons will be tormented with extreme thirst and hunger. There the luxurious and the lovers of pleasures will be bathed in burning pitch and stinking brimstone and like mad dogs, the envious will howl for grief. There is no vice which will not have its proper torment. There the proud will be filled with all confusion, and the covetous be straitened with most miserable want. There one hour of suffering will be more sharp than a hundred years spent here in the most rigid penance. No rest, no consolation is there for the damned, but here there is now and then pause from toil, and we receive solace from our friends. Be anxious and sorrowful for thy sins now, that in the day of judgment thou mayest be secure with the blessed. For then shall the just stand with great constancy against those that have afflicted them and kept them down. Then will he stand to judge, who now humbly submits himself to the judgments of men. 
Then the poor and humble will have great confidence, and the proud will fear on every side. Then he will seem to have been wise in this world, who learned for Christ to be a fool and despised. Then our tribulation suffered with patience will be pleasing, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Then every devout man will rejoice, and every irreligious man will mourn. Then the flesh that has been mortified will triumph more than if it had always been nurtured in delights. Then will the mean attire shine, and fine clothing appear as under a shade. Then will the poor cottage be more commended than the gilded palace. Then will constant patience be of more avail than all the power of the world. Then will simple obedience stand higher than all worldly craftiness. Then shall a pure and good conscience more rejoice a man than all the philosophy he has learned. Then shall the contempt of riches weigh more than all the treasure of the earth born. Then shalt thou be more comforted because thou hast prayed devoutly than because thou hast fared daintily. Then shalt thou be more glad for having kept silence than for much gossip. Then shall holy works be of greater value than many fair words. Then shall a strict life and hard penance be more pleasing than all the delight of earth. Learn now to suffer in little things, that then thou mayest be delivered from more grievous sufferings. Try first here what thou canst suffer hereafter. If thou canst now endure so little, how wilt thou be able to bear everlasting torments? If a little suffering now makes thee so impatient, what will hellfire do hereafter? Behold now, Thou canst not truly have the two joys, to delight thyself here in the world, and then reign with Christ. If to this day thou hadst always lived in honors and pleasures, what would it all avail thee, if thou wert now in a moment to die? All then is vanity, but to love God, and to serve him only. For he who loves God with his whole heart fears neither death nor punishment nor judgment nor hell, because perfect love gives secure access to God. But it is not wonderful that he, who still takes delight in sin, should be afraid of death and judgment. It is good, however, that, if love as yet reclaimed thee, not from evil, at least the fear of hell restrained thee. But he that lays aside the fear of God will not be able to continue long in good, but will quickly run into the snares of the devil. And that concludes chapter 24 of book 1 of The Imitation of Christ.